Hey you guys, I'm Chris Douglas with Bear Creek Arsenal and I want to talk to you a little bit about what's in my pack. Now I'm here just getting ready to go into the stand and I'm going to take a little bit of time to take this pack apart and to show you what I use. Now this would work for most deer hunting situations. It is gun season now, so we're not worried so much about the bugs. So I left my, my bug spray and all that sort of stuff at home. But, but what I'm gonna show you in this is gonna be something that you could use, you could possibly take away from this and be able to put it in your pack. So let's just open it up. I'm just gonna go in blindly in this thing and show you what we've got going on. So I'm gonna start in the front of this pack here. So what I have here in front of me is a saw and clippers. Now these right here are almost absolutely mandatory in any type of hunting, whether you're going to do it from a ground blind or a tree stand, because there's always going to be that limb that's just in your way. Sometimes you don't want to break out the big saw when it's small enough to cut with these, but sometimes it needs a saw. So you have that. I would always recommend to have these in here. I've got a grunt call here. This is a Primo's grunt call. And you can see you have a, a number, you have a, a, a snort wheeze part that sounds like this. That's a challenge that a buck does. That's a deep grunt, but you can use that. These are great to call blind, but most of the time it's for stopping a deer or drawing a deer in that you've already seen. We can talk more about that later because there's all sorts of techniques with that. Aha, uh -huh. I've got a gutting kit right here. This is just going to have my, um, my uh, long gloves and the, and the smaller rubber gloves. The, so you can do a field dressing out in the field and not get it all over your sleeves because these gloves will go all the way up the, your arm so you can reach into the body cavity to get all of it out there. And uh, ah, got this little wind checker thing. Now this is a, one I've had with me for a long time. I can't just, well yeah I can, I can detach it here. And what this is, it's got some very small fibers in it. And you can see, if you can see right there, it's got a very small fiber, see it goes away, it's showing me which way that wind's blowing. Let's see, let that go there. Okay, the wind, and it just dropped right down to the ground. So it was right behind this truck. So if I put it up here, you can see, oh, there it took off. We've got a wind that's going that way right now. The reason I like these, now you see some guys with puffers, but the reason I like these is because you actually, once you let this go, if you're sitting in a stand, I've literally had that fiber to come back by me after it blows this way when the wind shifts. But you can watch it for a long period of time where the, the powder just kind of goes away, gives you kind of a direct line right at the at you yourself but when you watch it go away sometimes you can watch that thing drift off and go to a place you didn't have a clue so that these are really really handy right here i do i do like those and and they last forever i've had this one on here okay i'm opening up the main part of my pack and i probably should say that we're getting really close to the rut and so i carry a set of rattling horns with me not for everybody i understand that some people are a lot more less obtrusive going into their hunting place. They don't want to make any noise and that sort of stuff. When you're getting close to the rut, bucks do respond to rattling antlers. We could talk about that later on and our techniques and what we use for that. But it is kind of handy to have in case you see a buck out there, he's not responding to your grunt. Sometimes you can tickle the horns and he'll come right straight in. So there's something for you there on that. Opening up the big pack here. We have my lovely BCA toboggan here. It's a very nice one. This one really keeps you warm. It's got some windbreaker in it. And so it really, you slide this over your head, you're going to warm up real quick. And of course, gloves. You got to have gloves when it's really cold. And it helps kind of camouflage your movement with your hands if, you've, if your hands are exposed there. This big contraption right here is something that we must all have if we want to come back home safely. And that is our tree harness if we're hunting out of a tree stand. And you put this on, tie yourself into the tree. You have plenty of movement, but also um, you're safe. And you can also use it as a, as a drag or actually hanging a stand, you can use it as a climber. And I can show you guys that later, but just know that a harness is mandatory in my book to have in, in there if you want to be safe. Okay, I've got some nose jammer. I've talked about that in other videos. The nose jammer, call it a gimmick, call whatever you want, call what you want. I've had some pretty good success with this, and so I do like nose jammer. It's very pleasant to smell. It, uh, gets into your nostrils, that's all I can say, and, and leaves a, a scent that you almost can't get away from, and I think that's possibly what it does to the deer. They don't seem to be alarmed by it when they smell it. They seem to be somewhat curious about it, and I have had them come closer. We always try to play the wind. Sometimes the wind, especially here in North Carolina, doesn't always work because the wind swirls a lot inside the woods. Nose jammer may help you. You choose. Binoculars. I'm 50 years old. 
I need them more and more all the time as I go. This is a small Miopta uh, uh, 10 by, uh, these are, let's see, these are 8 by 42s here, 8 by 40, 8 by 32s, excuse me. And um, they're perfect for in the stand. I use them turkey hunting. I use them all the time, especially, don't have to have something so powerful because we're not really looking that far, but bin binoculars are very, very useful. Hydration, always important. Always bring water with you. And this is a really handy little thing here. This is a tree arm that you can screw into the tree to hold your gear on these hooks here that you see, hold your bow or even hold your rifle if you've got a sling. You can put it there. We also use them in the past to put it close to us and we can use it as a brace on the rifle. It has a number of different uses, but most of the time we use it just to kind of get some things up and out of the way so we're just not all hanging around close to us on the, uh, on the tree there when we're in the tree stand. Oh, extra bottle of uh, nose jammer in case I run out. We use too much of it. Um, this is very important. This is a, a pull-up rope. You don't want to go up the tree with, with gear on your back, really. If you were to fall, that's the worst thing to have something on your back, especially something like these things right here. Not good if you fall backwards on that. It's going to be bad enough that you fall. Hopefully you don't because you're wearing your harness. But if you have, have one of these to bring your gun up, to bring your gear up, it makes things a much safer much more convenient. I'm going to step right over here real quickly to these sides, this side here. Now I've got some, I've got some synthetic scents here. This is a uh, Black Widow Lure. This is the Dominator and this is the Scrape Master. And I've had good success with these and firing up scrapes out in the woods. And we'll talk about scrapes a little bit later on, but this is a really good thing. Um, this is a synthetic because in North Carolina we have discovered CWD. And so CWD can be transferred in urine. And so now we've gone to the synthetic urine. So we're ensured that it's not going to transmit CWD anywhere. But um, these are really good scents out there um, that you can use. Um, moving up into this little part of my pack here, <laughs> you can't. Go wrong with having a flashlight. That's a must, especially if you're hunting in the morning or trying to get out of the woods at night. It's very, very important. Uh, let's see what else, because I'm going in this thing blind here. Oh, I've got a couple of things here. Just keeps on giving, doesn't it? I've got hot hands for those extra cold mornings, and then I've got a range finder. Now, maybe not so, so critical in a rifle situation, um, but for a, uh, a archery situation, absolutely will range your deer for you while you're out there. Okay, and looking in here, and ah, last but not least, a hunting knife. You need a hunting knife for everything that you're doing. This particular one is really cool because you have a skinning blade and then you can flip it to make a gutting blade. And that is really handy when you're field dressing out there. Um, we use it extensively and it's just great for cutting knives or anything else you might need even in a survival situation a knife is very much a needed thing well that's what's in my pack go to the comments and let me know what i forgot maybe you have something in your pack that i don't have in mind i would love to know like and subscribe while you're there because we're going to be doing more tips and tricks about hunting with ars right here on bear creek arsenal